All right, let's have a look at changing the size of your tiny house. When you're just starting by modifying a template, you, most of the time you will find a design that you like, but you probably want to change it a little bit to, let's say, suit your regulations in your area or make the design a little bit bigger to give you some more space or make it smaller to save some money when you're building the tiny house. And to change the size of your tiny house, of course, you need to think about what is the size of the trailer or the foundation that it is sitting on. And so I will go ahead and change that now by clicking on my trailer or foundation tool. And once I've clicked on it, I will see the trailer and foundation properties pop up on the right here. And this will allow me to define what my base is that the tiny house is built on. So of course the 3D Tiny House Designer is a software to design tiny homes on wheels, but you can also design tiny homes on regular foundations. And you can change the type of trailer by, um, or the type of foundation, let's say, by clicking on this drop down here, and you will see a couple of different options. We have the flat deck option here, which is popular in Europe, in Australia and New Zealand. And then we have the fender option here, which is more popular in the US and in Canada, also some places in Europe. Um, then there's the gooseneck option, which is the same as the fender trailer, but it this time adds a gooseneck bump out, um, which you can use to pull the trailer on. And you will see that it has already automatically moved my window. Uh, in this case, I would probably need to move the window up a little bit to make sense with the design. Um, but this is how you would use a gooseneck trailer. And I'm just going to go and switch it to a regular foundation to show you what that would look like. Um, what you'll see here, the, the bump out from the gooseneck is still here. I will show you how to uh, get rid of that in a second. Uh, but yeah, this just creates a regular foundation um, that could be the placeholder for a concrete foundation or a pile or even screw pile foundation. So whatever you want to design your tiny house um, with, let's say with a uh, stationary foundation, that's how you would do that. And you can also use a structural floor. So let's say if you have a tiny house that you're building off site and then you are putting it into place on, um, on your site, let's say with a crane or something like that, and you're lifting it on the foundation, you will want to have a structural floor rather than just building straight on the foundation. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to use the flat deck trailer and I will quickly go into my shell settings and skip ahead for a second to get rid of the bump out, but I'll just, I'll explain this later on. I'll just quickly delete the window that was moved over here, uh, but I will show you how the shell settings work in a second. All right, so let's go ahead and change the size of the tiny house. And um, you can do this by just entering the length and the width. So let's say we will want to make this tiny house a little bit bigger to add some more space on the interior. I'm just going to go in and type in 8,000, which will make it a meter longer. And just as a quick tip, if you're using the Imperial system, I'm just gonna quickly switch over to show you what that would look like. Um, you will see, of course, the presets will be preset to the Imperial standards, but I'm just converting it back to um, Imperial from metric. So it's, we've got some funny dimensions. Um, I will just quickly show you how to type in imperial dimensions. So let's say if you want to have a 26 foot tiny house, you would type in 26 and then you would type in your apostrophe to declare the foot. If you then want to add inches to that, you just add a space on your space bar and then you would add in the amount of inches that you will want to add to that. So let's say we want to have a 26 and a half feet long trade. Of course, that's not usual, but you get the idea. Um, I will type in six and then I will add in my quotation marks uh, to define the, the inch. And what's super important here is that you always keep a space between the two measurements so that way the software understands this is a foot and this is an inch. And you can also even add fractional inches if you want to do that. So if you want to add a half inch or a quarter inch, let's, let's do a quarter inch. I can do one divided by four and then add another quotation mark here to finish um, my dimension. And then I will just press enter on my keyboard and this changes it to 26 and a half uh, feet and a quarter inch. Uh, of course, I would always recommend keeping, uh, keeping it even, let's say with uh, 26 um, feet like this. Um, but I'm just going to go and switch back to the, um, the millimeter system here and I will change it to exactly 
eight meters like this. And um, to change the width of the tiny house, uh, you can already imagine how that works. You would just go in and um, type in 3000 here, let's say for example, if you want to make a three meter wide tiny house, and then you just press enter again, and it will complete the dimension here for you. I'm just gonna switch it back to uh, 2400 millimeters uh, because that is the standard that you usually want to build to when you're in Australia and New Zealand, so your tiny house uh, doesn't get too wide. And you can of course change the height of your trailer as well. So let's say if we want to make the trailer a little bit taller, we can do that by just um, typing in the size of the trailer in here. And just as a quick tip, the height of the trailer will go from the top of the deck to the bottom of the floor. So altogether, the trailer here is 700 millimeters. And this would also include, let's say the structural plywood that come on top of that trailer here as well, just to make sure, um, yeah, that all of the thickness of the trailer is accounted for. I'm just gonna bring it back to 600 millimeters because that is the standard here in New Zealand. And what you're probably thinking is, now that we've added a, some length to the trailer, the interior of course will not fit anymore because it has been designed for a smaller tiny house and that's completely right. So what you'll see here, there's some length that was added to the front here. And of course we added one meter, so half a meter or 500 millimeters was added to the front and then another 500 millimeters was added to the back. And so you don't have to manually move all of the objects here in the tiny house. You can apply um, a move for all of the interior items. I want to add in some additional uh, living room space in the front here. So I'm going to shift all of my items a little bit back. So I'm going to say I want to move all of my items to the back and um, I want to move it by exactly 500 millimeters, which is half the size that we've just added. And then I will just confirm my move here by clicking on the apply move button. So we've just made sure that you don't accidentally move things so you don't mess up your tiny house design. So you have to click this button to confirm it. And this will move all of your objects back by the distance that you've just specified. Great. So now you can go in and um, also even change your Excel amount. I would recommend keeping this, it's, let's say two or three Excels, um, but talk to your trailer manufacturer to understand how many Excels you would need for the weight of your tiny house. Um, but this is more of a guideline to know where your Excels, uh, how many Excels you would want to have so it looks right. Of course, if you have a fender trailer, you will want to add a little bit more detail to your, uh, your trailer design so you can design around the fenders. And I will just show you how that works. If you're using the metric system, just ignore what I'm saying here because you will most likely be using the flat deck trailer. So I'm just gonna switch back to fenders here and you will want to move the fenders um, to the front or to the back a little bit uh, to adjust it to the exact size of your trailer that you will get from your manufacturer. If you don't know this, just leave it at, as where it is because this is kind of the, the usual uh, position of where a, a fender would sit, um, but that depends on the manufacturer. So at the moment, we just have a, a rough estimate of where this fender would sit. Um, so we just have put this at 55% of the, of the length of the trailer, but we can also be more accurate rather than just putting it in a percentage. And we'll just click on this drop down here to change it to an exact distance. So what you will see here at the moment, the distance from this, um, from this fender is exactly three and a half meters from the center to the front of the tiny house trailer. Um, you can also change that to be uh, the front of the fender if you want to uh, measure it this way by disabling the on center option here. So at the moment, our distance here would exactly be uh, three and a half meters from here to here. And um, let's say if we know that our manufacturer specifies that we have an uh, exact four meter gap between the front um, of the trailer to the front of the fender here, we can say, we will want to have a four meter gap here. So you can be really accurate if you really want to be, but I'm just going to go and switch back to percentage and 55% and on center, um, just, just to bring it back to the standard of what it was just before. And if you want to, you can even size your fenders as well, if you know exactly how tall they are and how much of a gap there is. So you can disable your auto fenders here, and then you can type in the exact length of your fenders 
um, how wide they are and how high they are as well. But I'm just going to auto size them again and get rid of my fenders altogether and put it back to a flat deck trailer um, to just bring it back to what it was. But that's how you would resize your tiny house and move everything that is within the tiny house to make sure it now fits the new size as well and modify your axles as well as modifying your fenders if you have them.